Well, have you ever been asked to do a job that seemed impossible? Well, um, one time uh, I was asked to, uh, to take a straw and put it through a, a potato. I tried and tried and was, was unsuccessful, and finally they gave me some instruction that I should put my finger on the end of the straw and jab it in. Now, as I struggled to, to do it on my own, it was impossible. But with some instruction and some guidance, what once seemed impossible became possible. Our scripture reading today is found in, in John chapter 15. But I want us to back up a, a little bit to, to John chapter 13. And, and what's happening is Jesus is with the disciples in, in the upper room. He's uh, having the last supper with them. It's the, the time for him to give final instructions to, to the disciples. And, and as he, you know, it's just a few hours, he's going to be arrested. And, and within 24 hours, he's, he's going to be crucified. And as he's with them in, in the upper room, he washes their feet. And he says, now that I've washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. You, you should be servants of one another. He also tell, told them, he said, I give you a, a new commandment, and that is that, that you should, should love one another as, as I have loved you. Love should be the distinguishing mark of those who follow Jesus. Now, when Jesus gave them those instructions, it, they may have been difficult enough in that moment, but in less than 24 hours, Jesus would, would be crucified and, and the, the disciples would be confused. And, and, you know, how is it that they should be about serving? How is it that they could, could possibly love particularly those who had done the, these horrible acts to, to Jesus? When, when they heard those instructions, it must have seemed impossible. They, they couldn't do it. You know, how could they show love to someone who was so angry and spiteful and, and tried to, the, who might try to harm them as they, as they harm Jesus? How could they show love to someone with whom they agree, disagree? And you, Jesus said that love should be the distinguishing mark of his followers. In chapter 15, Jesus gives them some instructions on, on how to accomplish what he's told them to do that they may seem uh, to, to be impossible or, or very difficult. He instructs them on how they should accomplish something that is beyond their personal capacity to do on their own. Uh, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can, can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Jesus said that God the Father was the gardener, Jesus is the true vine, and those who follow him are the branches. Now, the first thing that I want you to recognize is how important it is for the branch to stay connected to the vine. Now, this morning, I went out to the, the neighbor's apple tree and cut off a branch. Now, I did it with the neighbor's permission, so it, it's all right. You know, I, and there's, a, there's one apple on the, this branch that I, that, I, uh, that I cut. How likely do you think that this apple will ever mature? You know, there's, there's no hope. There, there's no way that this apple will ever mature because it's no longer connected to the tree. The tree was the source of, of life. 
You know, and, and what's interesting, I went out this morning thinking that it wouldn't wilt much by the service time. I'm amazed at how much it's wilted only in, in a matter of two or three hours, but there is still a bug on it. Um, <laughs> you know, Jesus tells his disciples, and that, that truth has been passed to us generation after generation through uh, through his his word, that a branch, you know, that, that we must stay connected to, to the vine. As a branch, we need to stay connected to the vine. As a branch, we need to stay connected to Jesus. You know, Jesus goes on to, to say that, that we cannot live as he's called us to live. We cannot bear f- spiritual fruit in our lives if we don't stay connected to him. Jesus told his disciples that he was going to send the Holy Spirit. He said, the Holy Spirit will help to remind you of the things that I've taught you. The Holy Spirit will give you guidance. For, for us, the Holy Spirit helps us to, to understand God's truth and, and applying it in, in our lives. The Holy Spirit helps us to, to give direction in our lives. We stay connected with the with the vine, we stay connected with Jesus by, by reading his word and, and studying it, by, by meditating upon it, reflecting upon it, uh, by, by praying, by also listening and, and meditating you know, as the Holy Spirit speaks to us in, in those, those times of, of silence. We stay connected to, to, to Jesus you know, as, as we do spiritual disciplines. In James chapter 4, verse 8, we're told to draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Well, I just mentioned some of the ways that we can draw near to, to God in, in terms of, you know, studying His Word, meditating upon it, praying, uh, spiritual disciplines. But I believe any time we do something with intentionality, with a desire of drawing near to God, what happens is as we seek to draw near to God, God draws near, near to us. In verse 4, Jesus said that if we remain in him, and some versions say that if we abide in him, uh, both, both remaining and, and abiding can kind of communicate the, the same idea of, uh, of being, being with, but, but I think that that idea of abiding implies more of a relationship and, and more of an more of a connection. It's not just a, a physical presence, but, but there's a, a connection as, as we are, are abiding with, with Jesus. Jesus is saying that we should remain connected to him, abide with him, and as we do, we will produce spiritual fruit. Now, the spiritual fruit that Jesus is referring to in, in this passage, um, Paul gives us a little more description about what spiritual fruit is in uh, Galatians chapter 5. When Paul wrote, writes that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we produce spiritual fruit, it isn't about us. You know, a branch doesn't produce fruit for itself. A branch produces fruit to be given away for the benefit of of someone else. You know, when Jesus told his disciples that they were to serve one another, one of the ways that they were to do that was by producing spiritual fruit, and that spiritual fruit is invested in the lives of others or given away or, or demonstrated to others. As we connect with Jesus, then we produce spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, as we stay connected with Jesus, we produce spiritual fruit. And that, that spiritual fruit that we produce is experienced by others because the spiritual fruit we produce is to benefit others. Uh, verse 2 makes a reference to to a branch that is, is being cut off or, and, and branches being pruned. Now, Marianne talked to you earlier in the service, I think, or you saw a video that she talked about 
the importance of cutting back a, a plant, pruning a, a plant, and, and how it, when you first prune it, it may look shaggy, it may look bad, but, but what happens is it, it causes it to produce more flowers or, or to produce more fruit. You know, one of the things I remember when uh, the first time I, I went to, uh, to Disney World in, in Orlando, I remember all the shrubs that were... Um, were growing in the shape of Disney characters. And you know, I'm sure it was no easy task to get those shrubs to, to look like that. But, but first of all, those shrubs, I'm sure, had to be hardy and, and healthy. And then the, the master gardener, or the master shrub shaper, um, you know, began snipping away. You know, began pruning a, a way to, to shape that... Um, that shrub into the, the masterpiece that, that they intended or, or that they desired so that it could be enjoyed by, by so many. Jesus said that God the Father is the master gardener. The master gardener sometimes cuts off a branch and he sometimes prunes them in order to produce more fruit uh, and, and to shape the, the branch as he desires. Now, one of the things that, you know, as it talks about cutting off a branch, that's not about someone losing their salvation. Uh, this passage, Jesus isn't talking about how we gain or, or lose salvation, but he's talking about how it is that uh, the God the Father works in our life, shaping and molding us. Sometimes that means cutting off a branch. Sometimes that, that means pruning and, and shaping and causing us to, to be who it is that, that God wants us to be. You know, Sometimes a branch must be cut off to allow new growth. Sometimes there needs to be pruning and, and shaping in, in order to allow um, growth or, or, or greater growth. Sometimes the, the cutting or the pruning can be painful. I remember when I was growing up and, and my father or my grandfather cut a, a limb off of a tree in his yard and it was a, it was a low-lying limb and every time he went around the tree he would hit his head on it when he was was driving the lawnmower so he cut it off and I, I remember that, that afternoon when he cut it off and and we went back in a, a few hours and and on the end of that branch where he had cut it or actually the tree side the, where the cut was uh, there was moisture uh, there were, were beads of, of sap there and, and grandpa said you know the the tree's crying because we cut off the branch you know, sometimes it, 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 it can be painful. You know, I, after pruning a, a plant, or pruning a plant back, it sometimes looks horrible, but in a matter of days, it, it will be growing back more beautiful than, than ever. In our own lives, when God prunes us, when God cuts us back, it isn't always pleasant. Sometimes the... Uh, pruning comes in a, in a season where we feel isolated and alone. Sometimes the, the season of pruning causes us to, to ask the, the question, why? Sometimes when we're being pruned, we, we may not understand. But in time, we find out that we are stronger and, and more fruitful because of it. Now, there is pruning that goes on in, in our lives, but all the struggles that we face are not necessarily pruning. You know, we're in a, a world in which um, God has put, uh, put laws of nature in, into place. And just because we're a Christian, God doesn't keep those laws of nature from acting on, uh, on our bodies or, or in our lives. There's also evil forces that, that are going on in, in the world in which we live. I, I think back in the, the story of Joseph, in, uh, in Genesis, and, and jo Joseph said, what others intended for evil, God intended or God used for, for good. You know, there are times when things happen in, in our lives that are not good. But in, in Romans 8, 28, it reminds us that, that God can use all things for good. You know, it's not that all things are good, but, but God can use them. God uses pruning for growth. God uses circumstances in our life to bring about growth and, and maturing. It should be noted that, um, that one branch doesn't prune another branch. 
It's not our job to prune one another. Now, there, are, there is a passage in Scripture that talks about iron sharpening iron for, that we should, uh, should encourage and, and sharpen one another in that way. But it's not our job to, to prune other people. It's God's job to, to prune and, and, and shape. Do you know the, the best way to have your prayers answered? You know, in verse 7, Jesus said, abide, or, or, or in, in verse 7, Jesus says that when we stay connected with him, his word remains in us, and, and to say it another way, when we stay connected with Jesus, then he shapes our, our desires, and, and when we are connected to Jesus and, and praying within his will, you know, it's an issue that, that our prayers are answered as we, we pray in, in accordance with, with God's heart and, and God's will. You know, there are three things that I want you to, to remember or take away this morning from this passage. First of all is the idea of abiding, of bearing fruit, and of pruning. You know, these three things don't happen in a, in a linear fashion, but rather, I, I think they happen more in a, in a circular fashion. And um, sometimes they happen one way, sometimes they, they happen another way. You know, the, the, the abiding can, can bring about bearing fruit. You know, sometimes the, the pruning can, can bring about bearing fruit. You know, it's also an issue that this abiding, bearing fruit, and pruning isn't something that, that we experience one t- time in life and, and it's over. But it's a cycle. It's a cycle that continues the, the, the God's work, working. We, we abide, we stay connected to, to Jesus. You know, and as we do that, we bear fruit. And in that process, God the Father prunes us in order that we might become more fruitful. You know, God the Father is the one who decides how the pruning will be done. But we have some control over whether we, we choose to, uh, to abide, which brings about bearing fruit. And so this coming week, I want to encourage you to, to do something intentional to, to strengthen your abiding in Christ. Some of you already faithfully have a daily quiet time, and, and that's great. Continue to do that, but maybe some need to start doing that, spending some time reading God's Word daily or reading some sort of a devotional. You know, in two weeks, we're, we're going to start reading that devotional to, together about, about prayer in, in that Draw the Circle book. You know, those might be goals of some things that you could intentionally do to, to increase your abiding with Christ that you in turn might, might grow in, in your spiritual fruit. Another step you could take is to, to intentionally take steps to, to, to bear spiritual fruit. You know, maybe the Holy Spirit has been prompting you that you need to be more loving to, to someone that you encounter or, or someone at work. Maybe, it, maybe it's an issue that, that um, you need to show show more kindness or, or demonstrate more patience. There, there may be things that the Holy Spirit is, is prompting in you and, and telling you to do that you've been resisting. You, you've been re- resisting, you know, producing that fruit, and so uh, you, in resisting producing that fruit, you've been resisting who it is that, that God is calling you or desiring you to be. Jesus exhorts us to remain connected to him. And when we do, he promises that he will stay connected to us. None of us can bear spiritual fruit without being connected to Jesus. And we bloom together by staying connected to him. Let us pray. Lord, I pray that you would help each of us to to stay connected to you. Stay connected to you in, in order that we might might produce spiritual fruit, that we might produce spiritual fruit as you've called your, your disciples, as you've called your followers to do. Lord, for someone who may be going through a difficult season of, of pruning, I pray that you would come near to them today and, and give them encouragement. Lord, for someone who, who needs a, a fresh ray of hope, I pray that your spirit would come near to them and as they draw near to you and may they just have an overwhelming sense that you're walking with them and that you will never leave them nor nor forsake them. Lord, I pray that as we draw near to you, 
that we would also just have an overwhelming sense of you drawing near to us. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.